what's in the oven? Well, it looks like a muffin of steel wool. Actually, what's inside that pad of steel wool is two springs uh, from the fire control group. There's the sear spring and the hammer spring. I've got them embedded in that pad to keep them off any hot spot. Uh, we are baking them at 600 degrees, a little slightly under, for about 30 minutes. Probably at the high end of uh, temperatures for heat relieving these items, but that's about the lowest I can get on this highly modified Betty Crocker Toaster Oven 1000. Time to see the results. And there's one. There it is. So those are the two that I baked. And you can see the color change in those compared to the multitude of other ones that I've made. In the never-ending task of making small parts, uh, I've got to decide on the trigger and the trigger bar placement. So here's the, this is actually the first dummy trigger that I made just for display purposes and with some slight modifications. It actually will aid me if not be able to be used as, a, as the trigger. So all the parts are in place, uh, the magazine and the bolt for, for placement, all the little parts of the fire control group. So there's the trigger and I've got about an eighth of an inch of movement before it hits the magazine and that'll probably be enough to release the uh, this little piece here. So I'm going to fashion a trigger bar and see if I can release the, um, the hammer. I have cut out a new trigger to just make some changes on angles I wasn't happy with. And I'm going to smooth off the, the forward face of the trigger. And you'll notice maybe in past videos a lot of my uh, rounded or radiuses match the top part of this roller on my belt sander and that's not by accident because it's kind of what I commonly use and I'm going to do it here. So after that careful machining there's the front face. Now I do need to narrow this down a little bit into a smaller a smaller trigger but I'll work on that later this fits in real nice right now and it uh, has motion back and forth and is on the same angle as the magazine I can actually relieve the inside of the trigger a little bit for more motion but the trigger bar will actually come across the top here over the top of the magazine. Just determining the trigger bar, the length of it, has to uh, go over the side of the magazine and will be embedded in a slot that I'm going to mill in the side plate of the, the left hand side. So just determining the, the proper length because in the in the arm position or the uh, hammer back position. I want to make sure I have enough tension placed on that disconnect so that I can release it. I've got about 3 sixteenths of an inch uh, travel on the trigger right now and uh, I'll fix that to the trigger and see if it works.
just by eyeball that looks about deep enough. Nice clean cut with those burrs. I, I can't believe it. Uh, even in this sloppy old drill press and the long shaft that I've had to leave sticking out because of the table height. No, I'm pleased with that. It's pretty good. So the slot in that side plate has been milled out to the depth that I needed. I needed uh, about 63 thousandths of an inch deep to match the 16 gauge steel sheet stock that I used for the trigger bar. And it's nice and snug and it allows straight back and forth movement of the trigger. That'll stabilize the trigger as well. And it's nice flush right there. You may have noticed how I've stabilized this plate, this frame plate. I took a, another piece of aluminum, squared it up across the top because all these lines are going to be cut parallel to the, the reference edge on top and just spotted holes down through uh, existing holes in the frame the side frame plate and then threaded uh, screws into this chunk of aluminum kept it nice and solid and allowed me to put a lot of pressure against that aluminum guide that I had clamped to my drill press table to keep it from wandering. It wants to uh, uh, cut against the edge and, and force the workpiece away. So give me lots of leverage and as you see it worked out really really nice. Well ladies and gentlemen this project is rapidly drawing to a close as far as construction of parts. I've got the hammer in the cocked position. The trigger bar is right where I want it to be. I've got a little cutout on the other fire control group side plate. And that fits in ever so nice. Allows enough clearance for that trigger bar to go into the plate. I've, I'm dry fitting everything. I've got the magazine release in place. Let's see if I can get that in there. There we go. Everything lines up nice. I'm going to insert the springs and see if this thing, there we go, pop. And insert the springs and see if this thing actually will release that hammer. Perfect. I don't think I detailed in any videos how I installed the springs on these little parts. Started off with the, the raw piece, drilled a hole for the, for the pivot. And then used my little squared off drill bit to bore a square hole or a square bottomed hole into each part. And then drilled another hole right through after I relieved the edge with my Dremel tool. Drilled a hole through the, the uh, piece so the tang inserts into the into that hole and the spring then sits nice and flush in that pocket. I've done that for both the hammer and the sear. And then this slips over top the uh, the shafts and the uh, fire control group. Okay, all springs in place. Let's put it together.